Hello everyone. In continuation with the linear algebra, we'll just discuss today the solution of homogeneous system of linear equations. Okay, by the end of the session, you'll be able to uh, get find the solution of homogeneous system of linear equations and uh, to find the solution also with using the Kramers rule of the system of equations. Okay, homogeneous system of linear equations. Uh, this is for j unknowns, right? It's a j unknowns. So ax equals to b becomes a is equals ax is equals to zero. That means what we have discussed in the last video that when I'm getting b equals to zero out of ax is equals to b, it's known as a homogeneous system of linear equations. There are two cases for arises for the homogeneous system. First is determinant of a is not zero. What will happen if determinant of a is not zero? The system system will have the unique solution. What was there in the non-homogeneous, the same as here also, but this system of equation will have a unique solution and that solution is equals to zero. That means all the unknowns would go to zero. Why this is the effect of this B is equals to zero, right? This is the effect of B equals to zero. So first of all, we have to check it out. Homogeneous system of equation, homogeneous system of equation means capital B is equals to zero. What do you mean by capital B is equals to zero? That means I will not have any constant term in the equations. Constant term will not be, uh, will be zero. That means will be other than, uh, will be other than non-zero element. So it, it will be zero, right? So X1, X2, Xj, all of them should go to zero for the unique solution when, when determinant of A is not zero. What will happen if the matrix is singular? That means determinant of A is equals to zero. Then it has infinitely many solutions. And to find that infinitely many solutions, we should have out of this uh, i uh, j uh, variables here j variable we have to assume any variable so suppose for example i'm assuming that z equals to k but what is this k k is nothing but k belongs to capital r minus zero so what is what is the meaning of this this capital r is nothing but the set of real numbers minus zero that means whenever i'm assuming only one variable only one variable that time i cannot assume that variable to, b as zero like for example if i have got uh, three uh, x y and z three variables out of that i have to assume z is equals to some value if i will assume this z is equals to zero right if i'll assume z equals to zero what to happen automatically by um, back substitution i'll be getting my y zero i'll be getting my x is equals to zero that means i'm i'm just reaching to this first case over here which is not the case that means what i'm biasing my results I'm biasing my result and that is why it's not possible and here this plays very important role to how to choose my z and therefore this z we have to choose it from the real numbers but except zero except zero so we that is why it's known as capital r minus singleton zero it's known as a singleton zero so this zero is not a part of capital r whenever you are choosing your k or whenever you're choosing your z out of that simple uh, we'll just go ahead with the example and what the values would be for x you will get some value y you will get some value and for z equals to k we have assumed and this is what is the solution of equations uh, we'll just see this with one of the example uh, let us go for this first uh, so this is 2x plus y plus 3z is 0 3x minus y plus z is 0 minus 6 minus 2y plus 3z is 0 i'll be saying i'll be doing this x is equals to 0 if uh, see that this is not i have not written here as b i have written it zero so because because i have got this is equals to zero so that means equations is equals to zero this that means this system is homogeneous system of linear equations so it's matrix of coefficients this is matrix of unknowns and is equals to zero x is this that, that's all i have just given you that then determinant of a i need to find it out determinant of a in the present case has come out to be minus 33 minus 33 i'm i'm not explaining you everything every step over here because determinant until now in this entire series uh, there is one separate video i have given you for the determinant as well so you can refer as that video so for uh, this uh, uh, particular video i'm restricting myself to make you understand what how the so homogeneous uh, equations will be uh, able to solve so determinant of a is minus 33, which is non-zero. Therefore, what will happen as determinant is non-zero, the system will have the solution and it will have the unique solution. What will be that? We have seen the last step. It's equals to x, y, and z equals to 
zero. So three of them will go to zero only because of this. So it's not required for you to write down the steps in between because anyways, the competitive exam will not have, you need not to show the in-between steps. You have to just find out the uh, one option out of four. So it's been, uh, so always you should have a, a tricks in such a way that you, the minimum time you will put an optimized solution you will able to find. Right. Okay, the next equations, uh, these are the set of equations. This is my AX is equals to zero, then determinant of A is equals to yes. Now coming uh, come on here, this is determinant of A is equals to zero. Here we have got the determinant equals to zero means my second condition will come into the picture. What is this? This is non-trivial solution will exist over here. So I have to put Z is equals to K in the first two equations. Now it's it's you are free to take any two equations out of this one, two, or three. But whenever we are choosing the equation to find out the next solution x, y, z, it will be always uh, advisable that you have to uh, take the equations in such a way that you will get your answer very fast. So if you observe these first two equations, you will have you you will see that there are maximum of one and two. Means my numbers are small. Whereas in the third equation, if you observe, it's three, six, and minus five. My numbers are a little big, so I will have. It's it's. Uh, if you if you have a calculator, you will not have a problem. But believe me, you don't have a calculator. You have to use a virtual calculator in the gate. So we have to choose our equations in such a because we have a flexibility given. We can choose any two equations. So we will be going for first and second because of there are small numbers one minus two and these are the numbers exist and it will be easy for me to get the answer right. So what we have done. So z equals to k. So I, what what I would doing? Z equals to k. K is a number such that capital R minus singleton zero. That means my k is not zero here. Understand? This k I cannot take it zero. If I'm taking this k is equals to zero, ultimately from these two equations I'm getting my x is zero, y is equals equals to zero. You can just check this out over here. If you take k equals to zero, you get my x and y equals to zero. Now for example, this we have got it here. You can write down so this way we, we have got this x minus 2y is equals to minus k x plus y is equals to k now this k and minus k in the present case they are uh, playing the role of the constants they are the playing the role of the constant that means what we have to find out my k first then ultimately x and y will come out so therefore this 1 minus 2 1 1 x and y this is minus k minus minus k and plus k so again the same condition uh, we have to treat this as now I'm I'm treating this this two equations set of equations as a set of homo, non homogeneous linear equations non homogeneous linear equation which we have seen in the last video it's ax is equals to b right so ax equals to b so ax equals to b again the same condition whether we have got the determinant is zero or not zero so now we have got determinant of this one minus two one one as equals to three which is non zero if it is non zero that means what my a inverse exists. If A inverse will exist, it will be directly, you can write down A inverse as this. Why? Because it's just a two cross two matrix. You can easily find out A inverse is equals to one upon determinant of A into adjoint. And can I write down the adjoint from here directly? Yes, you can. You have to just switch with this one and one because these, these are the two elements, one, one, so it doesn't matter. So this is my one and one. So nine non-diagonal elements I need to switch to find out my adjoint of two cross two and the non uh, diagonal elements I need to put the negation of that. So it's it, it was here one I have given in the adjoint as minus one and here it was minus two I have given it here as two right and the determinant of this matrix has come out to be three. So inverse a inverse is one by three and this therefore a in, x is equals to a inverse into b so x into y so that is x y is equals to one by three one two minus one one k1 minus k my, uh, k and this is k by 3 and 2k by 3 so my i have got my x the values of x as k by 3 comma y is equals to 2k by 3 now this values you can find out this values x and y particular values like x is equals to what a particular one constant or y is equals to some constant just by putting the values of k so if i'm putting my value of k one over here so accordingly i'll be getting my value of x and value of y Right. So if, for example, if I'm putting my k is equals to one, what will be the value of x? Value of x would be one by three and y would be two by three. 
and similarly k equals to 2 k is equals to 3 k is equals to 4 similarly k is equals to minus 100 k is equals to minus 1000 k is equals to so this k is from the real numbers and we know that real number will have the elements from minus infinity, infinity to plus infinity there are infinitely many numbers in the real line number and therefore this system will have a infinitely many solutions and that is why it's been given to you as infinitely many solutions if the determinant of the capital a is coming out to be zero and that is why so this is very important step to note it down if the determinant of capital a is coming out to be zero you will be getting the infinitely many solution because this k is nothing but k is any real number uh, from the um, except zero and therefore we'll be getting infinitely many solutions okay uh, there is one more uh, uh, way to get uh, the rule here grammar's rule uh, to get the solution of this so for example if it has been uh, not required for you to uh, get which method has been given uh, and so you can use uh, this grammar's rule as well if it's been given to you as this so what is this grammar's rule says grammar's rule says that delta is equals to a1 b1 c1 that means if you'll observe this a1 b1 c1 so you can say that delta is nothing but the matrix of coefficients of these equations then there will be a delta 1 Delta 1 is nothing but my this first row, sorry, first column has been replaced with K1, K2, K3. So first column, instead of A1, A2, A3, which are what? What are they? A1, A2, A3, they are the coefficients of X. We have to just replace A1, A2, A3 by K1, K2, K3 in Delta 1, which is not 0. Obviously, if it should not be 0. Then Delta 2 is, what is this? This If you observe here, this is, we have replaced this for y coefficients of y that is b1 b2 b3 so delta 2 is a1 a2 a3 this k1 k2 k3 c1 c2 c3 obviously it should not be zero and then delta 3 is obviously the last one which is for z and i'm, I'm replacing that k1 k2 k3 with this sorry c1 c2 c3 with k1 k2 k3 and therefore this is known as a delta 3 and the solution of the system of this equations would be capital sorry small x is delta 1 by delta y is delta 2 by y sorry delta z is delta 3 by delta so this is also one of the way to find out the uh, system of equations in this way which is also very simple but here you need to find out the determinants actually it's uh, delta is a determinant actually uh, please note it down this is not a, a notation of a matrix this is a delta is nothing but my determinant so determinant is not equals to zero so what are what am i doing I am finding the value of delta. I am finding the value of delta 1, delta 2, delta 3. These values are coming out to be some constant. And automatically, x is nothing but delta 1 by delta. Y is delta 2 by delta. Z is delta 3 by delta. That's all. It's very, very simple to find out the system of equations by the Kramer's rule as well. Yeah. I hope you have understood this. Uh, thank you. Happy learning.